Welcome to Jamie TV, thank you very much for tuning in. I was just about to start making some videos about mixing like a boss in Logic Pro for iPad, starting with a drum mixing video. When I realised that this project I want to use as my example project, I still need to do some MIDI stuff, some general maintenance stuff, just getting it ready to do the mixing. And I thought, you know, there's a bunch of people who are new to Logic Pro for iPad, so this might be useful to some people, so I'll stick the cameras on anyway. So this video is going to be about getting your MIDI shit together and getting organised, ready for electronic drum mixing stuff. I want to work on drum stuff first. I'm just going to press on each of these drum tracks and drag them up to the top. You'll notice I like to colour code my tracks. I always use the same colours for the same instruments in every project in every door. That way, it's easy to quickly navigate to what I want. But I've made an error here. You'll see I've got track header colours activated, which you can switch on and off by going to the three dots, customise track header, track colours. I like them on, but here on my hi-hat channel, lovingly called Twat Hat, you'll see I've made all the MIDI parts red, because drums are red, it's in the Bible, but the track header is garage band green, and we can't have that. To change it, I click on the track, open the info window, and click the colour. It's the first colour and full brightness, but this is the colour for the MIDI part which is highlighted. Click in No Man's Land to unhighlight those MIDI parts, now we can see the track header colour. Let's jump in and change it and restore order to the galaxy. You see? Not all superheroes at all. Before you get well and truly stuck into your mixing process, you need to do a very exciting thing. A housekeeping session. You need to listen through every single track, every instrument, down to the minutest of details. Make sure you've got no bad edits, that all your necessary microfades are in place. Make sure all the instruments complement each other as they should. Because if you do have an issue, now is the time to fix it. There's nothing worse than being in that creative flow of mixing, because mixing is a creative process, and having to break off to go and fix something. Speaking of which, I've just been listening to my drums, and I've noticed that in the second part of my track, there are no cymbals, and it really needs some crashes, so I've connected up my Donna Starry pad, and I'm going to throw some cymbals on now. I'm going to use the crashes in Drum 80 for now, just to get my part played in, may change that later. So I select the track, and my Starry pad is now armed. My playhead is at the beginning of the section I want to record, and if I go up to the three dots, top right hand corner in Settings, under Recording, Project Settings, I want a one bar counting. In app settings next to cycle off, I need to change this to merge because I want my new MIDI to merge into the same MIDI part as the drum MIDI I already have. Click done, cross fingers, hit record. I'm giving myself a more than generous 3 out of a possible 80 million for that performance. Now if we click on the MIDI part and here to edit, let's make it all big, I'm just going to pinch and zoom a little. Okay, now you see a weird thing has happened. I had the full level button activated on my starry pad, meaning that all MIDI notes played in would be recorded at maximum volume. But as logic is recorded in the symbols, which are up here, it's quite unhelpfully made all the notes I'd already played in in this section full volume too, which is why they're all red. So I'll just lasso them all, go to here, and you'll see that where velocity is listed, there's an asterisk, because it can't give me a value because I've selected multiple notes. So I'll type in 100, and now all my volumes are equal throughout the track. Right, let's quantize. Lasso the symbols, info bar, classic quantize, 16th notes. Now, I'll select the scissor tool and make a chop here and here. This part happens again, but for half as long just over here. So I'll delete these parts, press this, and drag a duplicate of the new part over and then I'll shorten it. And same again for the end of the track. Now I want to make all this MIDI into one part. So let's select the lot, tap, bounce and join, 
join. Now I need a duplicate of this track, so if I press on the track icon and duplicate, Logic will duplicate the track. Exact settings and plugins, but no content. I don't want that. Undo. If I press this duplicate button up here, it will do the exact same thing. But if I press it and hold it, it will allow me to select duplicate with content. Now I'll go in and edit. Select everything but kicks. Press on a note, delete. And now let's rename this track kick. And now I repeat this process for all the MIDI I have in Drum 80. As you'll see, now I've got 10 tracks of MIDI, a separate one for each component part of my electric kit. The cymbals in Drum 80 do sound great, but I'm looking for a different flavor for this track. So I'll select the track for the cymbal I want to change, click the browser icon, select instrument patches, and narrow down the search of logic sounds by pressing drums, kit piece, crash. This brings up a vast amount of results, which I've already searched through and I've chosen three crashes, but I'm re-engineering here so that you can see how I did it. Mouse wheel, don't fail me now. I'm gonna select this live feel crash and the icon here has changed and if I press on this button here, you'll see that Drum 80 has been replaced on this track by Logic's Quick Sampler, loaded with the crash sample I want to use. If you know the name of the sound that you're looking for, you can just go to the magnifying glass and type it in. So I'll do that for ease for the next crash. If you want to audition the sound, you can do so by pressing just here. But when I was looking for my sounds, I just kept pressing on them and selecting them. So effectively auditioning them in the kit, in the track like this. Going back to track icons, if I click on the track here for the kick, press on the info icon and unselect the MIDI part, click on the icon here, I can select an icon that looks like a kick drum. I'm now going to go through my kit and select an appropriate icon for each drum or cymbal because I find, for me, these visual references are really helpful. Now here's something for you to think about. Everything that produces a sound produces a pitch. It might be a guitar, it might be a smack in the face, but everything can be tied down to a pitch or I guess pitches. And some producers would say that this fact alone is enough to make it essential that you tune any percussion or drum instrument to be performing a note from the musical scale that your track is in. That was kind of complicated to say. Now I don't necessarily agree that this is always necessary, but the theory is sound. And in this track, my toms are definitely producing very clear musical notes. Now in Drum 80, when you move the pitch control, it tells you in Hertz what note you're producing, but that means nothing to me. So I googled it and I found there's loads of information about this on the internet and I found myself a nice little chart where you've got a list of musical notes chromatically and what they would be in Hertz next to it. So then with that information, I went and moved my pitches around, had a bit of a pissy pants around, tried some different notes from the scale of the track until I found three notes that were both musically pleasing and made the drums sound awesome. And I'm very, very happy with the results. Now, if you're interested in trying out this theory, then if you're using some drum software that doesn't give you any indication of what the pitch is, then it's still very easy to do this in Logic Pro by using Numbrini Audio's Guitar Tuner, which is free. If you would like some more information about this, I used this process in a very recent video I made about an app by Audio Thing called Noises. Go check that out. Different kind of instrument, but the demo still applies here. Now this brings us to our last topic for this video, rendering. Now I have kind of a controversial opinion about rendering. Some people get a bit upset with me about this, but I am of the opinion that when you come to mixing, at least by the time that you get ready for doing exporting your final mix then you should have committed everything 
to real audio. So in other words, any MIDI instruments, synths, drum machines, whatever, they should be gone and you should just be mixing real audio. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. It's just my opinion. But my, the reasoning behind this for me is, is I think that when you are exporting your project, you are asking your device, no matter what device you're using, you're asking your device to do a monumental amount of calculations all at the same time. So the more apps or plugins that you've closed, the more that it's just real audio in your project now, then the more chance there is that your mix is going to come out sounding the way that you want it to. If you don't agree, that's fine. Just comment below the video and tell me I'm a complete dickhead. I won't lose any sleep about it. All right, so let's have a look at how we do rendering in Logic Pro for iPad. Before rendering, I'm going to ensure that all pans for my drums are set dead center on my mixing desk and in all of the apps I'm using because I want to be able to decide where to place them in the stereo picture when I mix and I reserve the right to keep changing my mind until I think it's right. I'm going to demonstrate this bit with Twat Hat because I have insert effects on this instrument. To render the audio for Twat Hat, I'm going to select the MIDI part, tap, bounce and join, bounce in place. Now I have some options where I can name the rendered file. I want the destination to be new track. We can choose here what to do with the current hi-hat track. It can be deleted, left as it is, or muted. I'm going to say muted in case for any reason I need to come back to it. I'm not going to include effects in the render, but we'll see what happens with that in a moment. I want to include any audio tails because I don't want any audio to suddenly cut out and I'm not including any pan or volume information because I don't have any. I don't want to normalize, so I'm leaving that off. Engage. So here is the render. If I wasn't happy with it, like if it was peaking too much or if it was too weak a render, I could undo and go back to the app, change the volume and redo. And if I click down here, you'll see that because I chose not to bake in the effects, Logic has brought the effects with the exact settings over to the rendered track. So I still have complete control over those. And here is the grayed out twat hat track which at some point I'll probably delete. One little old hippie whinge from me is that render in place gives you no option to render to mono. And whilst a true dual mono file doesn't really make any difference from having a proper mono file, it's not what I want. Now, if you look closely at this render, there's more weight to it on one side than the other, even though I had everything center panned and effectively mono, meaning that sample was obviously pre-panned, which is not cool or groovy. The workaround is to go to my rendered track, click on this channel strip icon, click right at the top, select input, channel format, mono, then render that track. And now you'll see I have the mono render I want and still have my insert effects to play with. Now I just need to repeat this unnecessarily convoluted process for all of my drums. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope there was something useful in it for you. If there was, I have all the usual YouTuber links down below the video where you can chuck me a thanks. You can learn more about me or stalk me or whatever. If you'd like to discuss any of my process any further, then comment below the video. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. Please do give me a good thumbing and subscribe and ding my bell so that you'll be notified of my upcoming video where I get stuck into mixing this track. Until then, take care of yourselves. Be kind, be good people. People look after the planet, make lots of music, and don't pissy pants about. See you later.